who's singing with me? Well, good morning, everybody. Good to see everybody here. Um, just a few announcements here. Um, I'm trying to remember announcements here. Uh, we have, uh, let me pull this up real quick. Uh, got it from Pastor. Um, please remember the pastor. He has not been feeling good. Uh, he is actually sick. Uh, he asked uh, me and Cody if we'd fill in for him today. So we've been trying to uh, get all the announcements and stuff. I texted him this morning and asked him how he felt. He said, terrible. <laughs> so please remember him. Uh, I know this is probably killing him not being here at church and stuff. Uh, uh, but here's uh, uh, some of the announcements we have is, is uh, we have a um, ladies meeting. Oh, wait a minute. Let me go back to the other one. I went to the wrong one here. Uh, Okay, ladies meeting Tuesday at 6 o'clock. Don't forget that. Uh, also, we have Thursday prayer. Uh, so on every Thursday, we're going to have prayer from 6 to 7. We encourage you to be there, you know, if you can. If you can stop by one of the Thursdays, come in. If you're here for 10 minutes, if you're in here for 30 minutes, if you're here for a whole hour, whatever you felt God led to. But we're really wanting to do this because, you know, God's wanting to do something big. Yeah. And where does that start? starts with us. God says, I want a church that I want to do something great in, but how hungry is the church? You know, God's willing to do many mighty things, but it's, it's a lot of times He's waiting on us. So, you know, really keep that in mind that, you know, how hungry are we for a great uh, move of God? And that starts with prayer. Prayer. Come in here just seeking God to do some great things. Seeking God to, to do some miraculous things. The miracles. We've got a lot of sick people. So, you know, really use that to pray, you know, that God's going to do some great things. Also, we have uh, an open house. Karen Camille's uh, graduating. So please remember that, that she's going to be graduating. So they're having an open house. Uh, graduation this Friday from 5 to 8 in the fellowship hall. Um, come. I mean, there she's uh, inviting all. Come and, you know, tell her how proud you are of her and stuff. Uh, she's done some great things. Actually, Camille actually is, uh, helps with the sound now. And how awesome is that that we have our young people that are wanting to step in and help. I mean, that's awesome when we see our young adults or our, our uh, teenagers and stuff. They're helping with the sound system. You help them, you know. Um, we've had Leah up here singing. Awesome voice. So please let our teenagers and our young people know how proud you are. That's all the announcements. Please remember those. Remember our pastor. Remember Thursday. Man, I want a great move of God. Starts right here. Come, pray, seeking God. God says you fast and you pray and you come before me hungry. I'll show you some great and awesome things. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for who you are, God. We thank you because you are magnificent and you are great. And God, we can't wait to see what you have in store for this morning, God. What you're going to do. We give this service to you, God. And we ask that you just move in a mighty way. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. It was, it's good to be back. It seems like it's been forever since I've been here, but I'm feeling much better. In fact, I was uh, just talking to Sister Terry and Brother Dave before I came up here, and they asked me how I was doing. I said, I'm feeling fine. I took a step back. I heard a crunch. I looked down. I had stepped on and broken my glasses. But I'm still doing fine. Amen. <laughs> Thank God he's brought us through another year. It may not have been a great one, but he still brought us through. 2022 may not be any better, but that doesn't mean that we still can't get closer and closer to God, amen, and live how he wants us to live. Stand and worship with us this morning, if you would, while we sing this opening song. I bless your name. Oh, yes.
in prisoner's chains with bleeding scribes Paul and Silas prayed that night and in their pain is titled his love lights the way thank God for his love amen 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 I left the old paths I traveled so long I'm happy redeemed and free of Jesus the Lord, I sing a sweet song, His love lights the way for me, His love lights the way, I travel today, I'm sad. 
If you're thankful for his love, give him a hand clap this morning, church. Oh, yes. Amen, amen. Before Brother Cody comes for prayer requests, let's sing this, this hymn, Bless God, for all he's done. You may have been up down in 2021 you might be up or down in 2022 we still need to bless God for who he is and what he's done amen bless Let's... God for all he's done bless God for Christ his son and let us magnify Him, for He's holy, holy, one voice in unity, one voice in praise to Thee, with hearts of love and mercy, we 
your name this morning. God, we thank you for being here this morning, God. Thank you for your presence that is already here this morning. We just bless your name. God, you are so good. You are so mighty. Oh, yes. sing this one more time. Let's just seek the Lord. We just heard from the Lord. Let's just continue to seek Him. Continue to praise Him. Magnify His name. Let's do that this morning. Bless God for all He's done. Bless God for Christ Oh 
He's so good. Can we give the Lord a hand clap of praise? Oh, yes. He's so good to us. Amen. Oh, yes. Jesus. Name. If you have a need this morning, would you let us know by lifting your hands? We're going to take our needs to the Lord. Oh, yes. Um, and before we do, Roy leaned over to me. He's, he's, he failed to mention. Uh, would you pray for um, Alberta Lawson and her family? If, if you're not on the, the text messages and you didn't see, Fred passed away this weekend. Uh, so keep their family in prayer um, this week as, as they have to deal with that, that loss. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for all that you do for us. God, everything that you did for us in 2021, God, we thank you for what you did. And God, we look forward into 2022. And God, we already know that you are going to continue to do things for us. God, we already are going to be, we're walking into this year with thankful hearts, knowing, God, that you are going to continue to do the great and mighty things you do for us. Lord, we pray for the loss in the family. God, we pray for the loss that they are going through. Lord, would you be with them? Would you bring peace and, and grace to their family this morning? And God, for every other need that is represented here tonight, this morning, God, would you come meet our needs? Would you bring healing to those who need a healing? Would you bring provision to those who need provision? God, for the prodigal children who, are, who have left and who have run away, Lord, we ask, God, that you would call them back home. Call them back into your arms, we pray. God, we just bless your name this morning. We love you. We thank you for who you are. We give you all the praise in your name, Jesus. Amen. God on the mountain It's still God in the valley When things go wrong Oh, He'll make them right And the God of the good times It's still God
Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. When everything's going good. Oh, Jesus. But that's not faith. Faith comes when you're in that valley. Faith comes when everything around you seems to be falling apart and you just don't know what's going on. See, God said that there's going to be some rough patches out there. He never said everything's going to run smooth. Everything's going to be just perfect. But He did say also that no matter how bad it gets, I'm right there with you. I'm right there beside you. When you feel like you're about to collapse, I'm the one that's picking you up and carrying you the rest of the way. I don't know what you've been through this last year, but I know it's got to probably been pretty hard. But I want us to sing this one more time. Because God did bring us through 2021, and it was a rough 2021. But He brought us through. Brought us through. Life is easy when you're up on the mountain and you've got peace of mind. Like you never know, but when things change, you're down in the valley. Listen to this part. Don't lose faith, boy. You're never alone. For the God on the mountain. When things go wrong, He'll make them right. And the God of the good time is still God in the bad times. The God of the day. It's the God in the night. For oh, the God on the mountain. It's the God in the valley. When things go wrong, oh, He'll make it right. Oh, yes. And the God of the good. never lets us down. He never forsakes us. He's always with us. Thank you, Lord. Always with us. Jesus. Yes. Praise Amen. God. Praise Jesus. God. Amen. Maybe, well, I said should, you could be seated, but I'm just going to have you stand back up. The musicians want to come on down. I'm doing stuff a little bit. I'm going back a little old school. If we could, you know, those that can, I know some can't, but if you don't mind standing for the word. Amen. We're going to stand for the word this morning. Amen. I'm going to go to Mark 11. If you want to turn to that, Mark 11. I'm going to read 22 and 23. Yes. Go right ahead. Yeah. 
Yes. See, church, this is what it's all about. See, the scripture says by the word of their testimony. God, you know, people see about what God has done and what they've done for people, and it just makes others just that don't know God kind of want to be like, wait a minute, I got to know a little bit more about this. Praise God. Let's do uh, Mark 11, 22 and 23. Now, I'm going to read this in a little bit different translation uh, than what we have up there, um, just because I. Uh, the way I want to, to, to take this. But uh, starting out, it says, Have faith in God. Jesus answered, I tell you the truth. If anyone says to this mountain, Go throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will happen, it will be done for him. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for who you are, God. You are King of kings. You are Lord of lords. And God, I just ask that you just speak through me. I don't want anyone here to hear me. I want them to hear you, God. I want them to be moved by you, God. I want them to be able to leave different than the way they came, God. I want them to know that you were here and that your presence was felt. God, we give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Thank you all for standing. Uh, something I've always kind of been on my heart lately is to, you know, we kind of bring back that when I, when I preach, you know, standing for the Word. You know, we stand for the flag, we stand for, you know, all kinds of other stuff, pledge allegiance and stuff like that, and what is more important than God's Word. But I want to talk to you about mountain-moving faith. Now, is there anyone here... There's a, should I say, is there anyone who has a huge mountain to climb? We all could probably raise our hand at one point, if not right now, this mute mountain to climb. I want to read you a story uh, called, I Tried to Climb a Mountain Today. When I read this, I was kind of like, okay, this, <laughs> this is definitely kind of hit me here a little bit. But it says, I tried to climb a, the mountain today. As I inched my way up the path, I felt overwhelmed, so I had to turn back. You see, I tried to climb the mountain today. On my journey, darkness started to fall, and I was full of fear, so I had to return to a safe place. I was ready to climb the mountain today, but it was so hot outside, I thought I'd better stay in my nice air-conditioned house and rest up for tomorrow's attempt. I was about to climb the mountain today. But I had so many other things to do, so instead of climbing the mountain, I took care of much more important tasks. I washed my car, I mowed the grass, I watched the game. Today the mountain was, uh, will just have to wait. I was going to climb the mountain today, 
But as I started at that mountain in its majestic beauty, I knew I stood no chance of making it to the top. So I figured, why even bother trying? I'd forgotten about climbing the mountain today until a friend came by and asked me what I was up to lately. I told him I was thinking about climbing that mountain someday. I went on and on about how I was going to accomplish this task. Finally, he said, I just got back from climbing the mountain. You see, for the longest time, I told myself I was trying to climb the mountain, but never made the progress. I almost let the dream of making it to the top die. I came up with every excuse of why I could not make it. Up the mountain, but never once did I give myself a reason why I could. One day as I started at the mountain and uh, pondered, I realized that if I didn't make an attempt at this dream, all my dreams will eventually die. The next morning I started my climb, he continued. It was not easy, and at times I wanted to quit. But no matter what I faced, I placed one foot in front of the other and kept a steady pace. You see, when the wind tried to blow me over the edge, I kept walking. When the voice inside my head screamed, stop, I focused on my goal, never letting it out of sight. And I kept moving forward. At times I was ready to quit, but I knew I had come too far. Time and time again, I reassured myself that I was going to finish this journey. I struggled to make it to the top, but I climbed the mountain. I have to be going, my friend said. Tomorrow is a new day to accomplish more dreams. By the way, what are you going to do tomorrow? I looked at him with intensity and confidence in my eyes, and I said, I have a mountain to climb. When I read that, I thought to myself, is that not how life is? We want to come up with every excuse that we can come up with because we look at it and we say, okay, this is too hard, this is too much, I can't do this. Many people complicate Christianity. Religion often complicates simple biblical principles of faith. You see, many people believe that mountain-moving faith is only for the super-Christians. It's only for the ones that are so knowledgeable for the Bible, those that are, are beyond you know, what I can do. I, I, I don't have that faith. You know, this is my grandparents' type of faith. You know, I don't have that faith. But you see, I believe mountain-moving faith can be accomplished by those that have maybe been 20 years a believer and those that have been 20 days for a believer. You see, the, simplest, the simplicity of mountain-moving faith is found in our ears. If we look into Romans 10.17, in Romans 10.17 it says, Faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God. See, the problem with many believers is that they want to hear what the person has to say and what that person has to say and that person has to say and on and on and on. What do you think? What do you think? Well, let me tell you this morning, the bottom line is what does God say? What does God say? We want to look to everywhere else but God. Don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with going to our families and say, hey, i got an issue going on here. Keep me in prayer. Pray with me. But so many times we want to go and get advice from everybody else instead of seeking God. You see, the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God. You see, are your actions in line with the Word of God? Is your mind in line with the Word of God? You see, many people are looking for a new revelation. The best place to hear a new revelation is in the Word of God. You can't find better advice. You can't find anything stronger, anything better to help you through than the Word of God. You see, number two, the simplicity of mountain-moving faith is also found in our eyes. If we look in 2 Corinthians 5.17, in 2 Corinthians 5.17 it says, We walk by faith and not by sight. 
I read once where this said, and I love this right here, it says, faith is like a radar that sees through the fog. You see, the reality of things at a distance that the human eyes cannot see. When I read that, I thought, oh man, that is such a great definition. I mean, it is. Faith is dead to doubts. You see, dumb to discouragement, blind to impossibilities, and knows nothing but success. You see, faith lifts his hand up through the threatening clouds, lays a hold of him who has all power in heaven and earth. You see, faith makes the up look good, the outlook bright, the in look favorable, and the future glorious. You see, faith is when everything seems to be falling apart, I still look to God. That is faith. It's, we think that it has to be supernatural faith to where only these certain people can do it, but anybody can have this when they look to this, when they do this. Number three, the simplicity of mountain-moving faith is found also in our mouth. If we look to Romans 10.8, it says, The Word is near you. It is in your mouth, in your heart. That is the word of faith we are proclaiming. And verse 9 says that if you confess with your mouth and believe within your heart that Jesus is King of kings and Lord of lords, you see, that's what it says. That's the faith. We have faith by what we proclaim. We've got to proclaim it. We've got to believe it. We've got to see it. So many times we say it, but do we really believe it? It says you have to believe it. It doesn't say I just have to say it, but I don't have to believe it. How many times do we do that? How many times in our, in our life that we sit there and we pray, God, please touch us, please take care of this situation, but then really deep down, really, we're kind of like, but can He take care of it? That's when we start looking to everywhere else instead of just trusting in God. Well, it's not going as fast as I want. Maybe my faith ain't strong enough. It's not fast enough. It's not going at my route, my way, my timing. You see, we have faith by what we proclaim. Many people say, I can't wait until Friday. It's payday. I need a new dress. I need a new purse. I need a new shoes. You know? Or I need to buy this. Or I need to buy that. See, their faith is in whatever they proclaim. See, but a mountain mover proclaims, I can't wait to Friday, it's payday, and the first thing I'm going to do is give to God. Give what God belongs to Him. I can't wait to pay my tithes. Their faith is in Lord, not in things. I'll tell you that it, 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 it takes faith to tithe. It really does. I remember there was a situation in my time now, I, I won't talk into deep details, but there was a situation where I didn't know what was going to happen. I was at a point where we almost, you know, I was going to lose my house. Uh, I was just making just enough money. Now, I actually wasn't even making enough money to pay the bills. I, I, I wasn't. There was no way financially looking at the books. If you were an accountant, you would have looked at it and you would have said, there is nothing you can do. There's nothing. There, the, the books, the math, everything you add up, you're going to need another job and maybe two because there's, it's not going to happen. And deep down in me, this little voice says, you know, your first paycheck was pretty much what my ties would be. And I'm not trying to exaggerate this or anything. That's basically how it was. I'd have maybe enough money to be able to pay for groceries. And I looked at it, and I looked at it, and I looked at it, and that little voice says, you need groceries, you need this, you need that. You still have bills to the kingdom and getting paid. And some inside me says, this is where faith takes over, and you have to say no. No, 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 no. I have to pay first, I have to pay first. And I would pay my tithes, and still to this day, I look back at that, and there's no way possible, mathematically wise, that that should have happened, that I was able to be able to still pay bills that, you know, there's not been able to pay. There was no way that I'd had money to be able to get groceries. There's no way to be able to, to take care of what my kids needed. There was no possible way physically. But God constantly, constantly 
took over. I remember showing my dad and having him help me with things and he's looking at it and he's like, there's no way that this should be. There's no way that you should have been able to take care of what you took care of. There's no way mathematically you just must not have been putting all your stuff in. No, dad, this is everything of bills. This is everything that's going on. This is everything on there. This is faith. It takes faith to trust in the Lord that He will meet your needs. So many people, I know I'm not, I'm not really trying to, this is not just all about tithing and stuff like that, I am going on, but that is faith when you say, God, my first comes to you. My first comes to you. Never ever in my life that I've, since I've paid tithes, has ever in my life, has God ever made it to where I am not able to do what needs to be done? My bills, my groceries, never ever. As long as I always paid my tithes, He always took care of me. But what we don't understand, it goes beyond just paying tithes and blessings financially. It goes beyond that. Paying your tithes, He blesses beyond just your financial needs. He sees the faith that you have and He takes care of you mentally, physically, spiritually. It goes beyond that. So many people think, oh, it's all about the money. No, it's not about the money. It's about saying, God, I have faith in You and I'm giving it to You and I believe that, God, You're going to take up every other situation I have. The job that I am having this with, I'm struggling with, I hate my job, but God, I'm paying my tithes and I still believe You're going to take care of the other needs that I have. Faith. You see, we tend to say, Lord, send down Your blessings and then I'll tithe. We say a lot of times, not just in tithing, a lot of times it's like, God, if you take care of this situation, I'll come to church every Sunday. God, if you just take care of my deeds right here, right now, you know, I'll talk more about you. But it doesn't work that way. It says, give it to me first, Lord, and then I'll sow it. We've got it all turned around. That's faith. Faith says, hey, I'll give it to you first because I know you're going to take care of me. See, the Lord has nothing to prove. He's already given you His life. The principle is you've got to sow your seed to meet your need. You see, number four, the simplicity of mountain moving faith is found in our conscience. Oh, the conscience can get us. You know, that's that little thing when we're doing something. Sister Poole kind of, kind of hit that a little bit kind of this morning, you know, when we're doing stuff that we shouldn't be doing. You, you know how you get that little feeling inside that's kind of in your gut when you're upset or something because you kind of did something you shouldn't have done? But move, mountain moving faith is found also in a conscience. I read also, as I said, and Helen Hayes decided to make her first big Thanksgiving dinner. She told her husband and her son, I'll make a deal with you. Since this is my first Thanksgiving, okay, if the dinner doesn't come out good, you don't have to say a word. Just rise up, get your coats, and we'll go down to the local restaurant. So a few minutes later, the dinner was finally ready. She places the turkey on the platter and exits the kitchen and enters the dining room. As she walks into the dining room with the turkey platter on her, uh, uh, in her hands, her husband and her son were both standing with their coats and their hats on and ready to go to the restaurant. That's an example of lack of faith. Lack of faith there. They had that, that poor woman, they didn't have no, no faith in her cooking. Now, whether that's because that, you know, they've had her cooking and, and before, or, you know, and it's just one of those things, or, or why, I, I'm not sure. But I've been there. How many has been there where you sit there and you're like, you know, hey, you know, I've got this, I can do this, and then they're all like, oh, okay, if you say so. And it's kind of like, where's the faith? First Timothy 1, 18 and 19. Timothy, my son, I give you these instructions in keeping up or keeping with the prophecies once made about you, so that by following them you might fight the good fight, holding on to faith and good conscience. See, if you want to be a mountain mover, you cannot act upon your emotions. 
How many times do we act upon our emotions? And I'm not talking about, I'm just talking about, I mean, just kind of bear with me here a little bit here. You see, a mountain mover steps out in faith, right? Not on a whim, not on emotions, not because I feel like it, not because, you know, but, you know, I'm tired today, I don't feel good today, I'll, uh, you know, I'll read my Bible later. You know, I'm just sleepy right now, I don't want to do it. You know, I'm upset, I had a bad day at work, forget about it. You see, faith and good conscience and with a leading of the Holy Spirit. You see, we have to be no matter what. We have to work with God. We still have to, you know, we can't let our emotions get in the way of what God has for us to do. We can't get in the emotions of what God, you know, has in store. Number five, the simplicity of mountain moving faith is found in our hearts. You see, Ephesians 3, 16, 17 says, I pray that out of His glorious riches, He may strengthen you with the power through His Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell where? In your hearts. How? Through faith. See, little faith will bring your soul to heaven, but great faith will bring heaven to your soul. See, we have to have faith and believe that though through this whole uh, pandemic we got going on, that God is going to bring us through. That God's going to take care of us. That I know things are rough. I know things don't look good. But I'm going to have faith that if I keep serving God, if I keep going to church, if I keep, you know, uh, reading my Bible, if I keep doing that, He's going to bring us through all this situation. The problem with many believers is that they trust in the Lord to give them eternal life and glory, but they have problems with trusting God for their everyday problems. You know, I had a discussion one time, and we, we were talking. Uh, uh, I had a couple guys work, and they kind of believe a little bit different stuff. They believe uh, in the turn, you know, once saved, always saved, different stuff like that. And they, they asked, you know, they were asking me why I you know, what I believe, and they said, you know, he looked at me, he said, so what you're trying to say is God writes down your name in the book, and then he turns around and he just erases it out, and stuff like that, and I didn't think about it at the time, I wish I would have looked at him, I said, well, it looks like, sounds like to me that you just limit God, because God already knows whether you're going to make it or not in the very end, so if he writes your name in there, he knows you're already going to make it. And so many times we limit God. We believe, you know, God, we're supposed to believe God created the whole world and He created everything, but yet our faith is kind of struggles when we ask God to take care of our situation, whether it's physically, spiritual, mentally, if it's a health situation, and we look back and we say, God, you know, we believe You created the earth. We believe You died and rose in three days, but maybe this is too big for You. Instead of looking forward and saying, God, I believe this until you tell me no or until I make it to heaven one way or another, I'm believing and then I'm going to trust until you say no to me or else something else happens. So many times we give up too easily. Mountain movers live by trusting in the Lord for every situation they face here on earth. God cares about everything we go through. Everything we go through. That's how personal our God is. That's how awesome our God is. He cares about every little thing you go through. Whether it's a conversational work and you have an issue with a co-worker. Whether it's at school and you're struggling with your schoolwork. Whether it's the slightest little thing to the biggest little thing. He cares about everything. Mountain movers live by trusting in the Lord for every situation. But we are often gripped with fear. You see, that fear gets a hold of us. We fear the loss of a loved one. We fear the loss of our employment. We fear what other people are going to say. We fear, we fear, we fear. We fear because we got hurt, and now we're afraid that they're going to get hurt again, so we don't open up. We don't allow anybody to come in. We fear what other people say. We are on and on and on. But God has not given us the spirit of fear. 
We cannot fear for everything. We can't fear because things aren't going right. We can't fear and, and, and live life in fear. God has so much in store for us, but we let fear stop us. We let fear stop us from stepping out on that faith that God says, I've got so much to go, so much things that I want to do, but you keep stopping because you're scared and you're fearful. But He has given us the spirit of power, the spirit of love and a sound mind. There's another reference to consciences. God has given us the spirit of sound mind. You see, the enemy's tactic is fear. Fear does not come from God. In fact, fear is the opposite of faith. God has not given us the spirit of faith. So every time we got scared, every time we're in fear, we need to stop and we need to think, wait a minute, this is the enemy on my shoulder. This is the enemy on my back. And he's causing me to, to, to not get that blessing that God wants to give me. We have, we have passed up on so many, I've been the same way, passed up on so many blessings because we let fear get in the way. I like what one person wrote. He says, faith, uh, faith singing into my room and other guests took flight. Fear, anxiety, grief, and loom speed into the night. In their place, fear and peace took control and said, fear cannot live with us. See, the enemy attacks our faith, which should be directed towards God, and replace it with fear. Why? Because he doesn't want us to get that blessing. He doesn't want us, God, to receive the, you know, he doesn't want God to receive your faith. Satan instills fear in our hearts because he doesn't want you to get what belongs to you. What belongs to each and every one of you. See, as we take steps of faith and obedience and the blessing comes and then Satan can keep you from putting your faith in God, he is indeed robbing you of your blessings. Number six, the simplicity of mountain-moving faith is found in our deeds. You see, a man named Smith was sitting on the roof. Now, I said something about this. We talked about this Wednesday, and I had a uh, one Wednesday I taught, and I, I said a different version of this, a little bit different version. I couldn't remember this, but those that were there Wednesday, Wednesday will understand when I start talking about this. He says, um, a man named Smith was sitting on his roof during a flood, and the water was up to his feet. Before long, a fellow in a canoe paddled past and shouted, can I give you a lift to a higher ground? No thanks, he said. I have faith in the Lord, and he will save me. Soon the water rose to Smith's waist. At this point, a motorboat pulled up, and someone called out, can I give you a lift to higher ground? No, thanks. I have faith in the Lord, and he's going to get me there. Later, a helicopter flew by, and Smith was now standing on the roof with the water up to his neck. Grab the rope, he yelled. I'll pull you up. No, thanks, Smith said. I have faith the Lord will save me. But after hours of treading water, poor exhausted Smith drowned and went to his reward. As he arrived at the pearly gate, Smith met his maker and complained about his turn of events. Tell me, Lord, he said, I had such faith in you to save me, and you let me down. What happened? To which the Lord replied, what do you, what do you want from me? I sent you two boats and a helicopter. See, too many people... Too many believers pray and pray and pray and pray and they ask God to bless them and then God sends an answer their way but they lack the faith to act upon God's will. See, James 2.18 says, Faith without works is deed. Some believers find themselves in a spiritual rut for years and years simply because they pass up opportunity after opportunity and they're left with nothing. Martha Luther, Martin Luther once said, God our Father has made all things depend on faith so that whoever has faith will have everything. But whoever does not have faith has nothing. Simple mountain-moving faith. If the musicians want to come on up, start playing something. Simple mountain-moving faith, mountain-climbing lessons. I'm going to give you five quick lessons here, or three quick lessons here. Faith is not merely you're holding on to God, it is God holding on to you. He will not let you go, so don't let go of Him. And then faith begins where man's power ends. You see, as we climb, you must realize that faith doesn't operate in a realm of possibility. 
Faith isn't about stuff that is possible. When the possible takes place, God is not glorified. But when the impossible takes place, God is glorified. How many times through the Word of God do we see where God had to limit things down because like Gideon, he sat there and he had the, uh, uh, all of Israel and there were so many that it was like, okay, this is possible. God says, no, 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 no. We've got to change this up. By the time they're done, what was it? A third went up against them because it was impossible. When God challenges you to climb, trust and obey. Obedience is the key to climbing in faith. They begin to uh, play something in closing here in the last little bit. The Bible recognizes no faith that does not lead to obedience, nor does it recognize any obedience that does that do not spring from faith. You see, faith and obedience go hand in hand. You remember Saul where he thought it was all about the sacrifice instead of the obedience. You see, during the terrible days of the war, a father holding his son by the hand, he ran from that building and he had that had struck was struck by a bomb. You see, in the front yard there was a, a shell hole. And they were seeking shelter as quickly as possible. The father jumped into the hole and held his held up his arms for his son to follow. He was terrified. Yet hearing his father's voice telling him, Jump! Jump! The boy replied, I can't see you. I can't see you. The father looking up against the sky, tinted red by the burning buildings, called to his silhouette of his son. But I can see you. I can see you. You. He said, jump. The boy jumped because he trusted in his father. The Christian faith enables us to face life or meet death. Not because we can see, but with the certainty that we are seen. Not that we know all the answers, but that we are known. You know, I don't know what 2022 has in store for us. But what I do know that if we put our faith in the Creator, if we put our faith in the King of Kings, if we put our faith in the One who has never left us, has never forsaken us, has never let us down, and never will, it doesn't matter what 2022 is going to bring because He's going to bring us through it. It doesn't matter how rough things get. If we put our faith in Him, if we put our trust in Him, He will bring us through. We will make it. But as that story said, one foot in front of the other. One foot in front of the other. The winds are going to blow, but I'm going to still put one foot in front of the other. This morning, I want to leave the altars open. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what kind of mountain that you are facing right now. But I want to let you know, if you put your trust in God, if you take that step on that mountain, don't run from the mountain, don't try to to hide from the mountain, but you take one step in front of the other, the Lord God Almighty is going to be there with you. And you will make it to the top of that mountain. You will make it. The altars are open. As they begin to sing, if you want to pray at your seat, if you want to come to the up here, it is all open. But I want you to pray that God gives you the strength through 2022, that He's going to give you the strength when the winds come, when the battles come, that you're going to take faith in Him. The altars are open. The weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. When the darkness falls, it won't prevail. Cause the God I serve knows only how to triumph. My God will never fail. No, my God will never fail. I'm not 
gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. There's power in the mighty name of Jesus. Every war he wages. So I'm not backing down from any giant. I know how his story is. Oh, I know how his story is. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. God, you turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. God, you turn it for good. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory, for the battle belongs to you, Lord. Oh, yes. yeah. Mountain moving faith. Just believe that God can take care of it. Just take one step after another forward. Thank you all for coming this morning. Please remember our pastor in prayer for a speedy recovery that God will touch him and move upon him. And those that are also sick out there, please remember them. Please come back tonight. Hopefully we'll see you. Uh, you know, if we come expecting, that's faith too. Amen. If we come expecting God to do some awesome things, he's going to do some awesome things. Amen. But if we come in here thinking, oh, we're just going to come to another service and it's just routine, we're never going to see it. But I don't know about you, but I get tired of hearing about the great revivals in the past. I want a great revival right here. Amen. A great revival right here. Amen. God is going to do yeah. some great things. Come on Thursday, seeking God. If, uh, Brother Tommy, you want to you know, pray for dismissal prayer?
from you. But your word says that you have not appointed us for your wrath, but our protection. You have provided your protection by way of your finished work.